Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. GSMC Basketball Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network, and I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it is Monday, beginning of the week for most. All right, I'm sure there's some lucky people out there who get Mondays off, but nonetheless, for those of us who don't, here we are. All right, it is now time for round two of the NBA playoffs, quarter semifinals, semifinals of each prospective conference. Okay, obviously we had game seven between Indiana and Cleveland taking place on Sunday. We're going to talk about that right now. We're also going to talk pretty much the same way we did the round one predictions where we did each uh, matchup and pretty much make my predictions. That's what we're going to be doing for this show. All right, so let's see. We got we're going to do the Raptors Cavs matchup here and then Sixers Celtics in the second segment. Third segment, we'll talk Philly or actually Golden State versus New Orleans and then Houston versus Utah in the fourth, all right? And we're also going to recap as we go, pretty much, the games that happened over the weekend, like for this segment or whatever, like Raptors closed out on Friday. We're still going to talk about that a bit in this first segment, so you get the gist of it. But either way, I mean, the Cavs pulled it off. They ended up beating the Pacers in game seven, 105 to 101. For the Pacers, you had Thaddeus Young with 14 points, four assists, 10 rebound shots, six of 13. Bowen Bogdanovich. Didn't do anything. Had three points, two assists, shot one of nine, one of seven from the three-point line. Miles Turner didn't do much either. Eight points, four rebounds. He was a very big disappointment in the series, I feel. Darren Collison had 23 points, two assists, one rebound, shot nine of 13. Victor Oladipo had 30 points, six assists, 12 rebounds, shot 10 of 21, four of nine from the three-point line. Demonte Sabonis off the bench had eight points, or 10 points, excuse me. Struggled in this one, had five rebounds, shot three of 10. Ryan Stevenson had eight points, shot three of six, and then for the Cavs, all right, you had Kevin Love, who had 14 points, six rebounds, shot five of 13, not great there, did shoot four of eight from the three-point line, though, Tristan Thompson had 15 points, 10 rebounds, shot five of six, Kyle Korver was one of seven from the field, had three points, J.R. Smith, three of nine from the field, eight of those shots were threes, those are the three shots, he hit three of those shots there, had 11 points there, off the bench, I mean, Larry Nance, 1.4 rebounds, 0 of 2. Jeff Green, 5 points, shot 1 of 5. Jordan Clarkson, 0 points, 0 of 4. George Hill, 11 points, 1 of 3 from the field, but did take nine, uh, 11 free throws, hit 9 of those. And then you had Rodney Hood, who played 7 minutes, 0 points, 0 shots. Okay. So obviously with the Cavs, I mean, you do have that LeBron guy in Game 7 who dropped 45 points, Four steals, seven assists, nine rebounds, took 15 free throws, hit 11 of them, shot 16 to 25, and two for three from three point line. Okay. And like I said, Cavs ended up winning 105 to 101. This was a bit of a scare for the, for the, not even a bit, this was a big scare for the Cavs in this series. All right. I don't think LeBron's ever gone to a game seven in the first round, let alone he's never lost in the first round. But nonetheless, they ended up making it out. And you know what? My thing with the Cavs is that they're a bad team, okay? And I don't feel like that's a hot take or anything like that. I feel like there's just pure facts right there, okay? Because the fact that none of those players besides LeBron can go out and feel good about themselves after that series. Like, like they were bad. They were terrible. Kevin Love was bad. I don't care that he scored 15 points or whatever in Game 7, Okay? That doesn't matter to me because the fact of the matter is he played bad for the previous six games, okay? Those guys that they traded for, pretty much, honestly, you could not play them 
and there wouldn't be a difference. Like they were borderline useless in this series. Okay. Larry Nance, his role isn't really eh, it's I don't even know if he has a role. Okay. Rodney Hood doesn't seem like he fits in with this team too much. Jordan Clarkson is just another guy on this team. And George Hill just looks like an old man playing on the Cavs. All right. Then you got J.R. Smith, who has been on this team for quite some time. Hasn't really shown up all season. Tristan Thompson, he's probably, he, he had one start in Game 7, played well. Other than that, I mean, he was a no-show pretty much. That was because Ty Lue wasn't playing him, but nonetheless, you get the gist of it. All right. Jose Calderon, I mean, really, that's your starting point guard in the playoffs? The only reason why this Cavs team didn't get swept and why they made it out the first round is because of LeBron James. All right. None of those players on that Cavs team can go out and pat themselves on the back. All right. You can't, none of them can feel good about it. They can't feel happy about making it out because of the fact that they were so bad. It was brutal. Okay. And now they're going up against, actually, you know what? I'll talk about their series with the Raptors in a few moments. Let's talk about the Raptors closing out this series on Friday. Talk about that a bit. And then, like I said, we'll talk about pretty much the Cavs problems matching up with the Raptors. All right. So on Friday, like I said, we had the Raptors facing off with the Wizards. The Raptors won this one, 102 to 92. For the Raptors, you had Serge Ibaka with 7 points, 3 rebounds, shot 3 of 10. Jonas Valanciunas had 14 points, 12 rebounds there, shot 6 of 13. Kyle Lowry probably had his best game in the playoffs of that series. Had 24 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds, shot 9 of 15, 3 of um, 7 from the 3-point line. Those are the games from Kyle Lowry I was expecting to see when I talk about maybe we're expecting too much. I think we talked about it on Friday a bit. That's exactly what I was talking about. I've been expecting Kyle Lowry to go out and put up 24 points. Not 24, like exactly, nonetheless, but around that little range. And with his assist numbers and rebound numbers there, it was pretty nice too. So this is a good game for Kyle Lowry here. DeMar DeRozan had 16 points, 4 assists, shot 6 of 18, 0 of 4 from the 3-point line. Not a great game, but nonetheless, when you got Kyle Lowry playing like that, you don't need really to do too much. All right, and then off the bench, you had Van Vliet, who returned, had 5 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 2 of 7. And then for the Wizards, you had Marcus Morris with, or Markeith Morris with 12 points, 15 rebounds, shot 5 and 9. John Wall had 23 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds, shot 9 to 22. Bradley Bill had 32 points, 3 rebounds, shot 10 to 22, 6 to 10 from the three point line. Let's see. And then off the bench, you had Mike Scott with 8 points. All right. So, like I said, Raptors closed out the series in six. As for the Wizards, I mean, it might just be time to blow out this core. They're not, they're not winning a title. Okay. They're not even getting to the finals with this core, I don't think. I think they've hit their peak. They were a very good team. But nonetheless, they're not getting far at all. And as for the Raptors, I mean, this was a big series for them. Especially just with all the talk as far as their past in the playoffs. Obviously, they haven't been a great team or anything like that going back. But this year, they look a little bit different. All right, they got it's probably the best team they've had in a while. All right, compared to the last few years of them being in the playoffs. And now it's just a matter of how, how they do against the Cavs. Okay? And as far as it all goes, I mean, if I'm the Cavs, I'm worried a bit. Because the fact of the matter is, I mean, LeBron, who I do think is the best player of all time, just given everything that he's done so far in his career, and even stuff like this, all right? This first round matchup, or this first round that LeBron had, even elevated him even more, okay? I mean, it's ridiculous to where now people who don't like LeBron will put him up against certain teams. Well, not certain teams, the teams that he's playing, okay? It's no longer the Cavs versus LeBron. It is, or not, I mean, not the Cavs versus LeBron, the Cavs versus the um, Pacers or whatever, okay? Every time we talk about the Cavs, it's LeBron versus the Pacers, okay? And I think that kind of points out, too, a little bit more as far as how bad his team is. LeBron literally beat the Pacers. The Pacers can't go out and say, oh, well, I mean, the Cavs were the better team. All right, you had Kevin Love who played well. Tristan Thompson played well the entire series. Guys like J.R. Smith, they all stepped up. All right, we couldn't do anything. Like, no. If I'm a Pacers fan, yeah, I'm excited about the future because of the fact that they do have a real solid core. All right? But nonetheless, you got to think back and realize that you lost to one player. This was not a team effort at all. All right? With what the Cavs did. It wasn't. It was literally one guy who beat you four times. Okay? Literally, LeBron had to go out and score half of their points in each of those wins. Well, nearly half. I mean, he's only a few points off. He had to go and do that in order for them to have a chance to win. All right? 
The Pacers had way too many bad games in this series. And fact of the matter is, you should never lose the one player. But nonetheless, it's LeBron James, okay? So now we're taking these LeBron performances. And, I mean, you see him after Game 7 at the press conference pretty much saying, you know what, I'm tired, I want to go home. The guys had to go out and do everything for this team, all right? Now you're going up against the Raptors team where this is probably the best squad, like I said, they've had in years, the deepest team they've had. Kyle Lowry seems to be playing well in the playoffs this time. DeMar DeRozan has played well. All right, Valanciunas always seems to show up in the playoffs. And then, like I said, you got the solid bench. How, how are the Cavs expecting to get out of this series when only one player has performed? All right. And yeah, I'll give you this. Kevin Lev, Tristan Thompson played better. Well, Tristan Thompson hasn't had really much of a chance. So nonetheless, when he got a chance, he played well in Game 7. Kevin Love played better in Game 7. All right? But you can't really hold on to that and think, oh, yeah, they're going to replicate that for the second round when they only did it once in seven games in this series. How do you expect... Okay, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way, okay? Let's say LeBron goes out and scores 45 against the Raptors. Okay, and I think the the Cavs' highest scoring game was 104 points, I think it was. Let me see. What did they score in Game 7? I remember one of the games, the games they scored 104. Game 7, they scored 105. So I think this 105 right here in Game 7 was their highest scoring output of the series. Okay, unless I'm just mistaken. LeBron had to go out and put 45. Okay. Now let me look at the Raptors series and see what their highest, their lowest one was. 102. On Friday, 108 in Game 5. Let's see. Let me see. I think, yeah, 102 had to have been their lowest scoring game. Unless it was um, oh, 98 in a loss against the Raptors. Or in the Wizards in Game 3 or whatever. But nonetheless, my point that I'm trying to make here is, sure, LeBron can go up, go out and put up 45 against the Raptors. Okay. But we've seen against the Pacers, that's only going to get you about 105 points. That's only going to add to that. Are we confident enough to see think that the Cavs defense can go out and limit the Raptors in games like that where no one shows up besides LeBron? I don't think so. All right. Honestly, the favorite in this series, even given with how LeBron has been playing, is the Raptors. All right. It's literally, it was literally LeBron versus the Pacers in that first round, which is just ridiculous to say. No one on that team showed up. It was just, they're, they're, they're a bad team. Okay? You take LeBron off of this team, they are the worst team in the league, and I don't think it's close. All right? I was going around thinking, what players could you put on this Cavs team to get out of the first round? Meaning, you replace LeBron with whoever. All right? Put, I might have a hot take here. You put Jordan on that Cavs team. Is he really getting out? I don't know. I'm not like I'm saying, all right. Jordan's a great player. Probably second best player all time for me. Jordan didn't get out the first round, so he got Pippen pretty much. Alright. There is no one close to Scottie Pippen on this Cavs team. It is ridiculous what LeBron did for this series. But nonetheless, like I said, I mean the Raptors for me are just way too deep of a team and way too good of a team for LeBron just to beat them on his own. All right, so I got to say Raptors in six for this series. And you know what? LeBron's probably going to end up proving me wrong because of the fact that you can never count them out. But logically speaking, I got to take the Raptors. All right, the Raptors are the better team out of the two by far. It's just a matter of LeBron, whether or not he goes out and pretty much just dominates and wins it single-handedly. All right. So we'll see, but like I said, I got the Raptors in six, but it's going to be an interesting series. I wonder if Kevin Love or anyone's going to show up, and I don't, I, I don't see it happening, so we'll see, but we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, like I said, we're going to be talking about the Celtics closing it out against the Bucks. I think it was on Saturday. All right, Philly, we already talked about them closing out their series, so we're going to talk about the celtics Bucks a bit, talk about that series, and then we'll talk about the Celtics versus Philly for that second round, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. 
Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. In that first segment, we basically talked about the Cavs. Game 7 against the Pacers. I mean, LeBron single-handedly won that series. I don't like their chances against the Raptors for Round 2. I got the Raptors winning in 6. All right, it's going to take, I mean, one of the greatest playoff performance, playoff series performances of all time from LeBron in order for them to beat the Raptors. I mean, he can't go out and average like 30 points a game and expect... And us expect the Cavs to go out and win. Like, that's not going to happen. LeBron's literally going to have to go out and score at least 35 a game, I think. Average 35 a game in order for this team to get past the Raptors. So, we'll see. But, like I said, the Raptors have been looking good. Cavs, I mean, other than LeBron, have been terrible. So, I don't know. But either way, for this segment, like I said, we're going to be talking Philly versus Boston. But first, let's talk about Game 7, which was on Saturday between Milwaukee and Boston. And talk a bit about that series. And, like I said, we'll move on to the Philly and Boston series after that. But here we are. All right, so Game 7 in Boston. I mean, the series has been one where it's been home team winning, road team losing every time. All right, and that's the case here for Game 7. Boston ended up winning at home 112-96. to Giannis shot 7-17 in this game, 1-4 from the three-point line, had 22 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. Chris Middleton, who, I mean, it's the truth, was definitely Milwaukee's most consistent performer in this series of anything. He might have been their best player of this series. All right. He had 32 points, three assists, two rebounds, shot 11 of 18, five of nine from the three point line. Thon Maker had five points, four assists, six rebounds, shot two of four. Eric Bledsoe had 23 points, three rebounds, two assists, shot nine of 12. Eric Bledsoe, this was his best game. I'm actually surprised that he showed up. I meaning, like, I don't know. This is the dude was bad all series long, but nonetheless, he did show up for a big game here. Malcolm Brogdon did not. Shot one of eight from the field, had two points, three rebounds, four assists. Off the bench, Reggie Barry Parker, who had 9 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, shot 4 of 8, was a minus 24, which was a team worse in this one. All right, And pretty much no one else on that Bucks bench really did anything. Some of these coaching decisions were a bit head scratcher, a bit of a head scratcher. I mean, Shabazz Muhammad, who I feel like gave the team some pretty decent minutes when he was out there throughout the series, only got 3 minutes. I mean, Jason Terry, who's barely even played in this series, Played 20 minutes off the bench, which is just ridiculous. He went 1 of 4 from the field, had 3 points. Was a plus 4, though, so I guess he was all right for those 20 minutes, but it's just a matter of, I don't know, I don't get it there. And like I said, no one else besides Terry and Parker scored on the Bucks bench. For the Celtics, you had Al Horford, who had his best game of the series, had 26 points, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, 8 rebounds, shot 13 to 17. Semi Ojale had five points, five rebounds, shot two of four, one of three from the three point line. Again, his task was to guard Giannis. And if you paid attention to Giannis' stats, obviously, or watch the game itself, I mean, he did his job. Jason Tatum had 20 points, five assists, six rebounds, shot seven to 17, one of four from the three point line. Terry Rozier had his best game of the series also on this one, had 26 points, nine assists, six rebounds, shot 10 to 16, five of eight from the three point line. Jalen Brown seemed like he pulled his hamstring or had some type of injury there. Had two points, one rebound, one assist. Shot one of five in 16 minutes off the bench. You had Marcus Morris, who shot better than he had all series long. Four of eight from the field. Had 10 points, four rebounds there. And then you had Aaron Baines, who had eight points. Let's see, seven rebounds. Shot four of five. Shane Larkin also had eight points. Shot two of five, one of two from the three-point line. And then Marcus Smart had five points, three steals, one block, six assists, Four rebounds, shot two of seven there. Classic Marcus Smart game. All right. 
My pick in this series was Celtics in six. Okay. And I felt pretty comfortable with that pick. And me picking the Celtics in the series was just a matter of I was just going with the best coach in this series. Okay. Because obviously on paper, the Bucks do have the better team. And they did have the best player in this series, if not the best two players in this series, and Middleton and Nancy DeCumpo. Okay. So, I mean, going into it, I understand why many thought the Celtics were the underdog and why the Bucks would they why they thought the Bucks would win. But it's a matter of you give me Joe Prunty versus Brad Stevens. I'm taking Brad Stevens every time. Okay. This Bucks team didn't really impress me at all this regular season. If anything, I think they were one of the more disappointing teams of the season. Okay. Everyone expected them to do a whole lot. Expected Giannis to be in the MVP conversation. And Giannis, with the stats that he had, could have been in the MVP conversation if the Bucks won a few more, like, won more games. But it's just a matter of, they just weren't impressive to me. All right? I didn't think that with the team they got, I just, honestly, it was just, I didn't think Joe Prunty could coach well in this series. All right? And I feel like, like you saw that in the first two games, and you saw that in Game 7. Some of the decisions, I mean, like playing Jason Terry 20 minutes instead of a guy like Shabazz Muhammad, who, off the bench, didn't really play many minutes throughout the series, but when he was out there, gave you something. All right, and you play Terry 20 minutes, which makes no sense to me. Okay, and then for games one and two, I mean, Jabari Parker was probably Milwaukee's third, fourth best player of the series, and first two games, he didn't even play. It just seems like whatever Prenti was thinking, I mean, it just didn't work. And I figured... With Brad Stevens, he was going to make one of those moves where you limit Giannis for a couple of games, and he did that by putting Semi Ojale on Giannis. All right, getting guys like Terry Rozier going, Marcus Smart, Brad Stevens just simply outcoached him. The only reason why I'd pick the Celtics going forward in any series this year is because of Brad Stevens, not because of the team. All right, the only reason why I picked the Celtics to beat the Bucks was literally because of the coach. All right, and I don't think you could really say that about too many other teams. I mean, you put, let's put Joe Prunty on this team. You think the Celtics win? No. You want to put Ty Lue as the head coach of the Celtics? Do you think they beat the Bucks? Probably not. Actually, no. I still don't think so. All right. On paper, the Celtics are probably the fourth best team remaining. Ah, third best. I forgot the Cavs. All right. And as far as, I mean, the top eight teams who made the playoffs out of the East, you could probably make an argument. They'd probably, on paper, have the seventh best team. Sixth best. All right. So as far as it all goes, I mean, they handled business. They're now 36 and 0 in seri- um in these series when they're up 2 0. So there's that. And it's just a matter of I didn't really think Milwaukee had any chance in game seven. I mean, they were playing from behind the entire game. And it was just a matter of I mean, it's game seven in Boston. What do you expect? All right. So as far as the Bucks go, they need to get this head coaching hire right as far as the offseason goes. I doubt that they bring back Joe Prunty to run the show again. So that's why I said, I mean, they've got to get this right. you got way too many good players on this team to go and get bounced in the first round the way that they did. All right. I mean, Giannis, like he's getting to a point where he's not just some rookie anymore. He's not just some young guy. He's got to go out and... And I hate doing this too. I hate to put it on one player, but there's got to be a point where the Bucks start making some noise instead of making the playoffs and getting bounced in the first round. All right. And I don't really put this series. I don't actually. I don't put this series on Giannis by any means. If anything, I put it on Joe Prunty. And yeah, I put this one on Joe Prunty to be honest. All right. I mean, with the team he's got, they probably shouldn't have lost to the Celtics. So there's that. And as far as the Celtics go, I mean, they might they played a night against the Sixers in round and game one of round two. All right, unknown yet whether Jalen Brown's going to be playing, but nonetheless, I mean, as far as this series goes, I think given whoever wins, the series probably goes about six, seven games. Okay, I'm very curious to see what Brad Stevens has drawn up for Philly. I mean, you're going from Giannis onto the Kumpo and um, Chris Middleton to Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. Okay. And I'll give Brad Stevens credit here. He has drawn up game plans in the regular season good enough to limit and beat. Ben Simmons has relatively played well against the Celtics this year. But it's just a matter of, I mean, I'm not sure how effective Ben Simmons is going to be in this series. Okay. With how he played against the Heat in round one, I don't think he'll be that good in round two. And that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of leaning towards picking Boston. All right, I'm not sure yet what my pick is going to be. I'm like kind of deciding still, so we'll figure it out at the end of this segment. But nonetheless, I mean, 
Like with Brad Stevens putting Semi Ojale on Giannis onto the Kumpo. All right. Yeah, Giannis still put up about 20 points, 22 points in both of the games where you had Semi guarding him. Okay. But nonetheless, you saw that Giannis was limited a bit. And I think that's what um, Brad Stevens can do with Ben Simmons, whether, whether or not he puts Horford or Semi or even Marcus Smart on Ben Simmons. I'm sure you're going to be having. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what their starting five is going to look like for tonight. I mean, you could go to, you can pretty much go with the lineup of Rozier, Tatum. Probably going to be smart if Brown doesn't play. Okay. And then you go with Ojale at the four and Horford at the five, where you could have Ojale guarding Simmons. Actually, it doesn't really work that way because Philly goes with the starting lineup of Simmons, Reddick, Covington, Saric, and then Bede. Okay. So if we're going size matchups or whatever. I'm sure it's probably going to end up being Rozier being, being the starting. Yeah, they're going to go Rozier, I think. Then they'll go Brown or Smart at the two. Tatum at the three. Then you'll have Al Horford at the four. And I think they'll go with Aaron Baines at the five so he can guard um, and beat. I think that's going to be the start of the lineup. And then off the bench when you have Semi come on, you'll probably have him playing against um, Ben Simmons a bit. All right. So like I said, I mean, I don't think Ben Simmons is – honestly, I think that – He's just not going to be as good as he was in round one. All right. And I think uh, I'm, I'm very torn on who I want to pick here. I think the series can go either way. In fact, the matter is, I think that whoever wins this series, <clears throat> excuse me, whoever wins this series ends up going to the finals. All right. If Philly ends up winning the series, I say they get past whoever, Toronto or Cleveland. And same with Boston. All right. So we'll see. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go, uh, I'm torn. I got to go, ooh. I'm going to go Boston in seven. I think it's going to be another seven, seven game series. I'm going to go with the experience in this one. And I'm my, this pick is really banking on the fact that I, that um, I think Brad Stevens is going to have some um, game plan to limit Ben Simmons in this one, just like he did with Giannis for those two games. All right, so I'm going to go with the Celtics in seven, but I could very, like, Ah, I don't feel good about that pick. I why I think I should go Philly. I'm gonna stick with my pick, Boston and seven, but I would not be surprised at all if Philly wins this one. All right, so we'll see there. Anyways, though, we're gonna be moving on to the next segment. We're gonna be talking Golden State versus New Orleans. They actually already had their game one of the second round, so we'll be talking about that and pretty much talking about how Golden State is still the best team in the league. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. So far, we've talked about the first two second-round matchups of the East. We had Cavs-Raptors, Celtics-Sixers. For that first segment, we talked Cavs-Raptors. I got the Raptors winning that series in six. And as for Boston and Philly, I was very torn in that pick. I'm kind of leaning a little bit towards Philly, leaning a bit towards Boston. I got Boston winning that series in seven. I'm just really banking on the fact that I think that Brad's Stevens is going to either throw Horford, Smart, or Ojale on Ben Simmons, and that's going to limit Simmons a bit. And I think that if you limit Simmons, then you kind of limit guys like Bell, Nelly, Sarich, all those other guys, because I feel like they play well when, obviously, when they're feeding off of Ben. So we'll see. But like I said, right now, I mean, as far as that series goes, whoever wins it, I think is going to end up making it to the finals, which is kind of ridiculous to say about Boston because of the fact that they had so many injuries. But, I mean, Philly, 
has been the probably best team in the East so far, but I don't know. I feel like I got to go Philly. I'm going to stick with my pick. I'm going to stick with my pick. All right. But anyways, for this segment, we're going to head over to the West. We're going to be talking Golden State, New Orleans for this one, and then we'll finish off with Houston and Utah in the fourth. So let's get it started. Like I said, we had game one of round two between Golden State and New Orleans on Saturday. And I mean, Golden State pretty much wiped the floor with the Pelicans in this one. They won 123 to 101. For the Pelicans, you had Nikolai Miritich with nine points, had two, uh, eight rebounds, shot three of nine, one of four from the three-point line. Anthony Davis struggled in this one, nine of 20 from the field, had 10 rebounds, 21 points, was a minus 27, which was a team worst. Etwan Moore had 15 points, shot seven of 11. Rondo had nine points, 11 assists, eight rebounds, shot four of 10. Drew Holiday struggled, shot four of 14, one of four from the three-point line, had 11 points, four assists. Off the bench, you had Jordan Crawford with 14 points, shot 6 of 7 in 8 minutes there. Ian Clark had 7 points, shot 3 of 10 in 28 minutes. I mean, it was just brutal for the Pelicans. All right. For the Warriors, you had Draymond Green with 16 points, 11 assists, 15 rebounds. Dude's been a monster so far. Also had 3 steals, 2 blocks, shot 5 of 9. Andre Iguodala had 12 points in this one, 4 rebounds, shot 4 of 6. Kevin Durant had 26 points, 13 rebounds, shot 10 of 21, had two blocks also. Klay Thompson shot 10 of 22, was 4 of 9 from the three-point line, had 27 points, 6 rebounds. And then you got Nick Young, who got the start in this one, had 6 points, um, shot 2 of 4. All of those came from the three-point line. And then classic Nick Young was a minus 7, even though they blew him out by 22 all right, off the bench, you had David West with eight points, two rebounds, four assists, two steals also on a block. Pretty much did a little bit of everything, shot four of seven. Kevin Looney had three points, six rebounds, shot one of one, obviously. But nonetheless, the guy was a plus 34, which was a team best. All right, that was six better than Draymond Green, who was a plus 28. Kevin Looney might, I don't know, might be the little X factor for the Warriors. Who knows? All right. And you had Quinn Cook, who had 11 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds, shot 4 of 9. And then Sean Livingston had 10 points, 2 rebounds, shot 3 of 6. Okay. Let me tell you. If you watch this game, it was just, it wasn't close. After the first quarter, yeah, it was 35-34. Then the Warriors do that thing where they play really good basketball. All right, outscored the Pelicans 41-21 to in that second quarter. And that was just... It was it after that. I mean, the Pelicans had no chance, okay? And if you remember, if you remember, obviously, what I was saying before the series, I was talking pretty good about the Pelicans, okay? I thought that they played the best basketball out of the eight teams in the West in that first round, and I still do think that, okay? I understand the Warriors still played well against the Spurs, but nonetheless, I mean, the Pelicans dominated the Trailblazers from start to finish, swept them. Warriors lost the game, so that's why I gave it to the Pelicans. Okay, and I thought that Anthony Davis, Nikolai Miritich, Rondo, Rondo still played pretty well. I mean, he did shoot 4 of 10, but, I mean, that's not terribly bad from a guy like him. If anything, that's just average or above average for Rondo. All right, I figured you guys like Drew Holiday were going to play. Well, I just thought the Pelicans were going to put up a big fight, especially without Steph Curry in, these first, in this first game. All right, and the Warriors, I feel, kind of deceived me, okay? I mean, during the regular season, the Warriors without Steph Curry, I think we could all agree, are just not that, not as good as they are with him, all right? If anything, like, noticeably worse without him, okay? And I feel like they struggled, and I feel like the stats, records, prove that for me. So I figured, you know what, Steph's probably not playing, isn't playing game one, might not play game two, where it's looking like he's probable for game two so i mean it just could be an easy sweep for the um warriors against the pelicans and i'll make my prediction for the series at the end of the segment but unless i figured that the pelicans could put up a fight then maybe they could sneak away with game one and i figured even with steph curry the pelicans would play well they maybe get a couple of games all right i wasn't going out here saying oh yeah they're gonna win or anything like that because that's crazy talk but nonetheless i figured they'd play a whole lot better and it's just like the warriors don't care okay you're watching this game thinking, who maybe the Pelicans could put up a fight. And it's just like, no, it's back to the Warriors team where it's like, oh, yeah, they have all these great players. No one stands a chance. All right. I texted one of my buddies and I was like, you know what? Because these Warriors fans, I was like, this isn't even fun, man. The Warriors might just end up, might just, um, might go out and sweep the Pelicans. And easily, too. 
Okay? The Pelicans going into the series, I'm sure we're thinking, oh, yeah, we got it. We played well. We're going to be ready to go. All right? The Warriors aren't going to know what hit them. And it's just like, now that's all out the door. Out the window. Whatever you want to, whatever phrase you want to use. All right? I don't understand pretty much how this Warriors team flips a switch like that. They look unstoppable right now. They are without a doubt the best team in the West. Okay? And now you're getting Steph back. I mean, you beat the Pelicans by 22 and now you're getting Steph back? I mean, that's unfair. It's going to be very interesting to see what Alvin Gentry, Gentry draws up in order to try and combat this Warriors team. Okay? Because, I mean, he doesn't have much time. And a lot of these plans aren't going to work out. Okay. I mean, you got Draymond Green, who he's been unstoppable so far from the first round to this first game of the second round. I mean, I don't really think that the Pelicans really have anyone who could match up with Kevin Durant, maybe throw Anthony Davis on him. As far as Steph Curry goes, Rondo, his defense isn't what it once was. All right, I'll just go out and say that. Maybe throw Rondo on Clay Thompson. And I don't know. I just I don't like the matchups for the Pelicans now. I mean, it's just I was I was one of those was like you know what Pelicans are going to make this series, and now it's just a matter of yeah, probably not. I'm curious though. I mean, the Warriors have been playing well. Is it just they're going to be playing even better with Steph, or is it going to look a little bit different? All right, I don't think it'll look different. I'm just trying to ask a question, just trying to pose a question there. I mean, it's just a matter of, and that's one thing with the Warrior this Warriors team too that I'm starting to realize is that. You got two top five players. On, actually, is Steph Curry a top five player? Let's go right here. You got LeBron, KD, James Harden, Kawhi, Anthony Davis. Ah, Steph's, you can make an argument for top five. So you have arguably two top five players on your team, four top 20 players. All right, and usually you think, you know what, with all those guys, I mean, with the Thunder, okay? Paul George, Russell Westbrook, Melo, there's only one ball. It's not going to work, right? And yeah, it didn't. Okay. But for the Warriors, it seems like they don't care. They don't have egos. So that's why it works, I guess. So it's going to be real interesting. It's not like just, like, obviously the Warriors are going to win this series or whatever. But if I'm the Rockets, I'm kind of looking over my shoulder. All right? The Rockets, yeah, they've played well. Blew out, right? And blow out Utah, but pretty much... It was a race, but it wasn't really much of a race when you had Utah playing from behind the entire time. All right, but nonetheless, I mean, the Rockets haven't played nearly as well as the Warriors have so far in the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting to see really what comes about from the Rockets. All right, and we're going to be talking about them in the next segment, but it's just a matter of, I mean, is there anyone realistically that can go out and beat the Warriors that you'd be comfortable saying, oh yeah, I picked this team to beat them in this series? All right, because no one in the East is beating the Warriors in the finals. All right, and my, you put Philly, Boston, Toronto out there. No, I'm not even gonna throw Cleveland out there because we already know that answer. And as far as the West goes, I mean, the only thing that's standing between the Warriors and the Finals is this Pelicans team who got blown out by 22 with a team without Steph Curry. All right, and you got a Rockets team who I don't think has played their best basketball yet. And they got two players who are known to struggle when it matters most in the playoffs. So we'll see, but. As far as my picks for this series, I mean, I got to go Warriors and six. Ah, Warriors and five. I don't feel comfortable doing it, but it's Warriors and five. I really want the Pelicans to maybe win a game or two, in, or win two games in this one, at least to make it a series, but I just, given how game went, went I just don't see it happening. So we'll see how it all ends up, but we're going to wrap it up here. Like I said, next up, we're going to be talking Utah versus Houston. I'm going to talk a bit about the Thunder in that segment too since we got to finish up uh, Utah and the uh, OKC series and the game took place on Saturday. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen. 
listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. So far, we've talked about all the new second-round matchups. All right, I picked the Raptors against the Cavs in six. I picked the Celtics against the Sixers in seven. And then I picked the Warriors against the Pelicans in five. And, man, very excited for that series. I was very excited for that series, and the Warriors just completely took that out of me. So there's that. But anyway... All right, now we got Houston versus Utah. We're going to talk about Utah and Houston's game one in a bit, but we got to go back to Friday and recap Utah versus Oklahoma City game six. Utah ended up closing out the series there. We're going to talk a bit about both teams for the series and talk a bit about the Thunder, and then we'll move on to game one of round two to recap that. But nonetheless, all right. OKC won game five, took it back to Utah, and Utah won this one 96-91. to For the Thunder, you had Carmelo Anthony with seven points. Three rebounds, shot three of seven. Wow. Paul George, all right, nicknamed himself Playoff P to start the playoffs. I mean, I don't I don't understand that nickname. That's not even a cool nickname or I, I don't get it. I mean, Paul George, you did way too much. You nicknamed yourself Playoff P. All right. From my understanding, nicknaming yourself Playoff P means you're supposed to play well in the playoffs. That's supposed to be like your thing. Oh yeah, when the playoffs come, playoff P. Oh wow, yeah, here he comes. He's gonna play well. Yeah, playoff P dropped five points in game six, a winner go home game, had six turnovers, three fouls, was a minus two, had three rebounds, did have eight assists, so I guess, yeah, he passed the ball, shot two of 16 from the field, 0 of six from the three point line. That's playoff P? Really? Is that what this is? This is what we get from playoff P in a winner go home game? I mean, that's terrible. It's garbage. It's ridiculous. All right. Steven Adams had 19 points, 16 rebounds, shot 9 of 11 from the field. Steven Adams needs to get away from Oklahoma City. He needs to go to a team where he doesn't have to deal with Westbrook, George, or um, Carmelo Anthony. I mean, I don't even think he can because I think he's under contract right now. But it's just a matter of, I mean, Steven Adams needs to go like to, to like, play for the veteran minimum with the Warriors. Okay? And just be appreciated there. The dude's played well all season long, and he gets none talked about him because of the fact that you got Carmelo Anthony, who's been pretty much about as played as well as me at a pickup park, which is terrible. All right, Paul George. I mean, like I said, playoff P. Oh wow, here comes playoff P. Oh, he's gonna score five points in Game Six. Then you had Russell Westbrook. Okay, forty-six points, ten rebounds, five assists. Shot 18 of, watch this, watch this, 18 of 43. The guy took 43 shots. All right. I mean, he, uh, he tried having a LeBron performance and it didn't work. I mean, he did shoot 42% from the field, so that's all right. And he went 7 of 19 from the three-point line, but it's just a matter of, I mean, come on now. All right, and I mean I can't blame him. It's not like Melo was gonna do anything. Paul George took sixteen of sixteen shots and we only made two of them, and no one off the bench is really gonna do much. So I can't really knock Russell Westbrook for taking forty three shots. It's like okay, if people say, "Oh, share the wealth," who are you gonna share it with? Melo, who's just gonna waste it? Paul George, who I mean, not gonna make it. Stephen Adams, maybe, but I don't know. It's just ridiculous. So then we had Utah. Let's see. For Utah, you had Derek Favors with 13 points, a rebound, shot 6 of 9. Joe Ingles had 12 points, 5 assists, 7 rebounds, shot 4 of 11. Rudy Gobert had 12 points, 13 rebounds, shot 5 of 9. Donovan Mitchell had 38 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, shot 14 of 26, 5 of 8 from the 3-point line. Dude just had a monstrous third quarter, and they just ran away with it after that. All right, and then off the bench, you had Jay Crowder with 5 points, shot 2 of 10. Hasn't really been great. Had one good game against the Thunder. I think that was game five. And other than that, I mean, really didn't really do too much. Alec Burks had 11 points, shot four of nine in this one. So obviously, 
like I said, Utah won this series. All right, we're going to move on over to game one of round two between Utah and Houston in a bit, but I want to talk about the Thunder real quick. All right, so Carmelo Anthony was asked pretty much in a little season end press conference, would you take a bench roll? Okay. And he pretty much said, like, there's no chance he's not sacrificing anything for a bench roll. And let me tell you about the lack of awareness on this guy. Does he not realize how bad he is now? Okay, it's borderline frustrating to see Carmelo Anthony just have this much lack of awareness. I mean, dude, you're not who you once were. Okay? You've been in the league for 15 years, 16 years, whatever you want to call it. That's fine. You were great. Realize now that you are not the same Carmelo Anthony. Okay? Realize that you probably never will be. Like, I don't understand why. Like, it's just frustrating to see just a lack of awareness. Like, why does he, like, what What planet? Who is telling him, oh, yeah, you're still great, Melo. Yeah, you're still a great scorer, Melo. Did he not watch himself this season? All right? This is... One of the things that's frustrating me about Melo is a selfish player. Okay, I always say he's got that Kobe mentality, but he isn't good enough to be like Kobe. All right, teams have spent, all right, the Nuggets and Knicks spent years trying to build a team around him when in reality, you don't build a team around Melo. You can't because you're never going to get anywhere. Kobe, at least, is like LeBron. All right, you give him Pau Gasol, Lamar Odom, Derek Fisher, he's going to utilize those guys. All right, he's still going to act like Melo taking a bunch of shots, but he knows how to utilize the guys around him in a way where it affects winning. Melo doesn't. Melo isn't a leader. Melo isn't a guy you build a team around. He never was. And for him to go out and say he's not sacrificing anything to go um, take a bench roll with the Thunder is just, it's ridiculous. And if I'm Billy Donovan, first thing I'm doing is moving Melo to the bench next season. All right? And if Melo didn't like it, then he could stay there because no one's trading for him. Like, do you think Melo realizes that no one's going to want to trade for him and all that money he's got? And, like, literally no one thinks that he's as good as he once was? I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's infuriating almost. How are you going to go out and say that when you played so poorly all season long? All right? I mean, I, it, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, Really? Like, does he get, does he see what happened this season? If I'm Russell Westbrook, that's got to bother me a bit. And if I'm Paul George, and again, it's not just like, oh, I'm just a crazy person. I'm sure Westbrook and Paul George see the kind of season Melo had. All right. Paul George, for the most part, was very good this regular season and for the postseason, eh, for the most part, the post um, for that first round. Russell Westbrook, we already know what kind of player he is. You don't think they're looking at each other like, this dude's crazy? All right, and Melo gets frustrated because he gets left off the little Olympic roster for the um the little one that they brought in or whatever, like the however many people they bring in. I don't get Melo. Who is telling him how good? Like who is telling him pretty much and filling up his ego? Honestly, whoever's doing that needs to stop. All right, people need to tell Melo whoever's close with him, like you know what, dude, my boy, but you don't got it anymore. All right, and it's not being a hater or anything like that. It's the cold, hard truth. Melo just doesn't have it anymore, and that's fine. The guy's in his 16th season. All right, Dwayne Wade might retire. Okay, maybe it's time for Melo to do the same, or at least take a lesser role. But who knows? All right, who knows? Obviously, the dude still thinks he's a top player in the league. He's not even a top 50 player in the league right now, to be honest. All right, we might have to do a segment where we just name. Play 50 players better than Melo. Who knows? All right. But anyway, like I said, Utah advanced game one against Houston in the second round. Utah had no chance. Houston won this one, 110 to 96. For Utah, you had Derek Favors with five points, two rebounds, shot two of five. Royce O'Neal got the start in this one, had four points, shot two of five there. Joe Ingles had 15 points, six rebounds, five assists, shot six of 11. Rudy Gobert only got four shots off, hit them all, had 11 points. It was 3-6 from the free throw line. Had 9 rebounds there. Donovan Mitchell didn't shoot the ball relatively well. 9-22 from the field. 1-7 from the three-point line. Had 21 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds. Off the bench, you had Jay Crowder, who played well. 21 points, 
five rebounds, shot eight of 13, five of seven from the three-point line. Dante Exum had nine points in this one, shot three of five. And then for the Rockets, you had James Harden, who dropped 41 points, seven assists, eight rebounds, shot 12 of 26, seven of 12 from the three-point line. Chris Paul shot seven of 14, three of six from the three-point line, had 17 points, four rebounds, six assists. Clint Capella had 16 points, 12 rebounds, shot seven of 13. P.J. Tucker played well. I mean, the whole Rockets team seemed to play well, the starting five at least. P.J. Tucker shot six of eight, three of five from the three-point line, had 15 points. Trevor Ariza had eight points there, three rebounds, shot three of six. And then off the bench, you had Eric Gordon, who was 0 of six from the field, but did have seven points because he went to the line nine times, hit seven of those free throws, had four assists there. Gerald Green only played a minute in this one, had three points. Luke and Bob Mute came back, had three points, shot one of five. So there's that. All right. And with this Rockets team, I think it's just a matter of Rockets and five here. Same with the Warriors. All right. Rockets and five. Utah, great story. All right. No one expected them to be here, but this is where the run ends. They'll probably get a game in Utah. But other than that, I mean, I just don't really see it happening. Maybe there would be a difference if Ricky Ruby, when Ricky Rubio comes back from his little injury that he sustained in game um, six against the Thunder. But it's just a matter of the Rockets are too good, okay? The West comes down to the Rockets and Warriors, and that's just the way it is, okay? If you're a Utah Matt fan, don't get mad at me for picking the Rockets in five. I understand that you think you guys still have a chance. You don't. This team is too young, all right? And it's just a matter of they need to build up experience. So we'll see about it. But like I said, I mean, Utah, great story. Losing Hayward, losing Hill, probably your top two scorers on the team last year. And you're probably just as good, if not better, than you were last season. All right. No need to hang your head or anything like that. The Rockets are just way better. That's fine. They're going to win in five games. It's cool. All right. So, obviously, that's my prediction. Rockets in five. But I think they're actually going to wrap it up here. All right. Today, we talked about each series for each segment. I got the Raptors beating the Cavs in six. Celtics in seven. Don't feel good about that prediction. It could go either way. All right. I mean, who knows? And then we got Warriors and five against the Pelicans. That's my pick. And then Rockets and five against the Jazz. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Jesse Tapia. We'll be back on Wednesday to talk about all the games that have transpired from tonight. Actually, I got to make my pick. All right, we got one game going on tonight. Philly versus Boston. Jalen Brown plays. I got Boston. Jalen Brown doesn't play. I got Philly. All right, so there's that. So thanks for listening. Again, we'll be back on Wednesday. So stay tuned and we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program